a T-O. The physical real, you know it's a deal. It's blessed when tears are up in his huddle with water to cook up a meal. My coaching into it, the combo is chill. Play action to chase, got hunger to feel. The cheetah is loose, he's going for blood. The end of the wrist only went for the kill. Miami, the city, the county, the block. We stay the impact, tail dead in the lot. Thief is strong and hard as a rock. Holland's a lock, and next the spot. Get it too hot, so turn up the fan. You look to the crowd, see Jimmy and Bam. Martin, Joe, and Sosa, the man's your fellas. Roll the clip, only fans. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to OnlyFans, a Dolphins postgame show presented by Sports with Soso. I'm your host, Joel, aka the Delusional Dolphin. And before we jump into things, we want to remind you to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you have subscribed, go ahead and drop a like and leave a comment. With me today, as always, for the past eight weeks, I've had the same crew, the same cast. I got Soso, the host of Sports with Soso. Yeah. And I got Martin from Tune Out. What's, What's up, going on, fellas? What's going on, man? It was a interesting uh, away game, let's just say. It was. It was an away game. It was a victory, uh, and it was a third win in a row. Another back-to-back -back road win. Uh, so at this point, I got to say, I got to quote Frank the Tank on this one, and I got to say the Dolphins are going streaking. We're going streaking. We're going streaking. Let's <laughs> do it, boys. Through the <laughs> you know how it goes. But yeah, man, it was an ugly win in the Windy City. But we pull away with uh, with a victory in Chicago, man. 35 to 32 against the Bears. Uh, what's an initial reaction? So for me, it's, uh, you know, the evolution of the offense getting better and better um, and ultimately bailing out the defense today. Sure. And Martin, what about you, man? I know you're a big proponent of the defense. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking your sentiment today, your initial reaction is going to be around that. Talk to me. What's going on? Uh, overall, obviously, the defense didn't really do what you wanted it to do. Uh, we got Chubb. He got a limited package in there. And we looked pretty much like last week. So we didn't get better, but we got the win. So I guess I'll take it. Yeah, man, absolutely. I think that's uh, the overwhelming consensus, you know, from, from us and from the fan base today. If you watch that game, uh, it wasn't pretty. Justin Fields set records today on us. I mean, the kid yeah. balled. He showed why, you know, Chicago's all in on this guy. Uh, I think he, I mean, when I'm pulling up his stats right now, he had 17 for 28, 123 yards passing with three touchdowns. That wasn't even the most impressive stat that he put up. He had 178 yards on the ground, one touchdown rushing with his longest rush, which was 61 yards. I mean, have a day, Justin. I will say I expected not the how high the numbers were, uh, but I expected us to him to ex, like exploit us uh, with his with his legs. I, I, that 100 percent I knew coming in was our weakness. We haven't been able to tackle all year. Uh, we had a couple sacks that he got out of. Um, so overall, I, this is something that I kind of saw, to be honest. I mean, yeah, we saw it coming, right? But like the the way it hurt us was him extending the plays. There were a yeah, couple so of plays where where yeah, he's running around and stuff like that. But somebody misses the tackle and now he's throwing the ball for ten yards or running it for fifteen yards for a first down. You know, well, uh, he he mainly ran it. He only had one hundred and twenty three yards passing. He took yeah. advantage of the run game. <laughs> But he also had three. He also had three touchdowns passing. Seven, no, no, seventeen I, I completions. Agree. Three of them were touchdowns. But I'm saying he didn't so, exploit us on the passing game. He exploited us on his with more his legs, more with his legs. Correct, correct. But, which is interesting. You Go gotta remember, guys, it's it's the run play option, right? Because it's literally him snapping the ball, holding it, checking what they have, hit, and showing showcasing his ability to scramble a little bit, get out the outside the pocket, and make an easy throw. It's not like he killed us downfield for sure. He didn't. Yeah, there were. I mean, they have. Uh, they had Ch Chase Claypool making his debut in a Bears uniform, right? And they tried to go to him a few times, and they, I think we had a PI that was called on us early. Uh, I think that might have been on Crossing. Uh, I can't remember right now exactly who that was on. Uh, and then they tried to go to him again late in the game. So they're they're trying to get you know Claypool vertical, but again, that's not where where they killed us. They they really killed us in the run game, and not even their traditional run game. It was just Fields. It was just Fields playing that Lamar Jackson you know esque role, you know, and and, and it was interesting because like Lamar didn't really do that against us, and Josh Allen, another running back, like, uh, running quarterback like that, didn't didn't have this explosive of performance. They did good. They did exactly what they were expected to do, but to see Fields put 178 yards on the ground, man, that that's crazy against this defense that we've been touting all year for sure like for me you know I, I, it's not that i've been a big hater of the defense but i've just known that they have flaws they have big time flaws and the ones that they have are the ones that kill us the missed tackling right the inability to get turnovers the, those are two main things that we saw or we see digressing from this defense last year it was really good at takeovers really good with tackling this year for some reason it's falling off even though it's same scheme same coach pretty much in boyer 
Um, it's concerning. Concerning. Good thing that the offense is, is really flowing and clicking and everybody's healthy on that side of the ball. Yeah, I want to jump over to the offense, but before we do, I think Martin had something to say to, to your point there. Go ahead, Martin. No, again, it, it, it's just me repeating myself, I guess. Um, we're looking at a secondary that's pretty pretty much undermanned. We lost one of our best, your, our best um, rush defenders we have in Brendan Jones. Um, we're, we're obviously, we're going as, as, uh, going along as we can. You lose all your corners, you lose Jones. Those are a whole bunch of different defenders out there that are, although in the same scheme, they're, they're rookies that didn't play with us last year. Kahu, Crossan, um, who's another guy that, that I know I'm forgetting, whatever he wasn't there. McKinley, another one. Yeah. It's just a lot of moving pieces, uh, on that defense. I'm not giving them an excuse. They played horrible today. That's, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay to, to say that. games though. Yeah. You know? But uh, again, you're playing on the road. You're, you're. It's a whole. I understand everybody's like Detroit, Chicago. Okay, Chicago put up 29 points in the Cowboys last week. Cowboys are the number one defense in the league. Um, so the Lions have been putting points up this year. Their record doesn't show it. I'm not. Again, I'm not giving you an excuse. I'm just saying. Detroit just beat Green Bay today. I mean, I know yeah. Green Bay's not. But, good, uh, but... again, that, that's not even the, what I'm going to go off. I'm going off the fact that um, our defense, although the last couple of years has been the reason we've spoken about this team because our offense sucked. Uh, now injuries come out and you guys are looking at it the same way. You can't. You have to be realistic. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 absolutely. And I think, you know, I think we're all on the same page there. We know that we've had injuries. We've been talking about that before the trade deadline. You know, we were hoping to get something in the secondary because we know how thin we are. We don't make a move for that. We get another pass rusher. I was hoping to see Chubb a little bit more involved. But again, first week with the team, what more can you ask for? We, we really needed other guys to step up. And I'll be honest with you guys, man, on the defensive side, uh, I, you know, I like what the D line is doing for the most part, but everything else, man, is just oh. really, really sus right now, especially over these last couple of games. But um, I would say, I'll, I'll say vice versa. I would say I'm unhappy with the D line, and I'm happier with what the rookie guy, the rookie guys are coming in to do on such you know sporadic situations. All right, I don't know. Not getting I don't, the pressure. I don't know. I, agree. I have to agree because Cater K, who has been really stepping up, uh, crossing, stepping up, and those are guys that we oh, didn't Noah, even know. Noah. Noah stepping up. Those are guys that we weren't relying on, but they've done enough. Sure. You know, nothing great, but they've done enough. For me, what it felt like though was that our our D line. You know, we had Wilkins, we had um, we did have Chubb in there on a couple plays, get through. We also Ogba. had um, not Ogba. Um, I'm thinking right now, uh, you're. Your boy Ingram, yeah, that Ingram fighting for his job back. Uh, <laughs> huge shout out to to Jalen Phillips, you know, with a block punt today. Uh, Andrew Van Ginkle with the recovery on that block punt. I mean, I felt like they were getting a lot of good pressure, right? The They're getting was there. They're just not finishing it. But, the, That's but, all here's, I'm saying. but here's my point, though. When your D line gets that pressure and you get the the pocket to collapse, that's when your your linebackers now, right, or your your nickel D, uh, backs need to come up and make that play. And they were doing that, but nobody can wrap and tackle on our on our defense right now. For and sure. I I don't know how many missed tackles we had, man. It was just, it was ridiculous to see that our D line was doing what they needed to do. And then the play would break down and then fields would extend it with his legs and then 10 yards, 12 yards, 60 but yards. That's, that's a, a running quarterback's dream. Let the pressure come to me. But if your second line can't get to me and he said it, he's like, I'm not really worried about passing. I'm worried about these people trying to get to me and making me run. And I'm going to beat everybody. That's literally what he said yeah. to one of the reporters. So, and you he know, did. Yeah. And he did. You know, to his credit, he had a great offensive game running the ball against us today. And it wor it does worry us. But at the same time, like, we're not going to see too many quarterbacks down the road who can run the ball like him. Maybe a Josh Allen, maybe a Lamar Jackson in the playoffs or something like that. But, like, it was just kind of fucked up to see how – uh, that type of attack can really hurt the Dolphins right now. Because yeah. even, the, you know, we're, we're suspect against the throw and they couldn't throw against us. You know what I mean? And I was kind of hoping that the D-line would show out today with Chubb making his appearance, um, Agua, Chris Wilkins, and it just wasn't there. For, think... for My bad. For, for a guy who, who has been sacked the most amount of times in the NFL and for us to only have him twice go, and zero throughout the whole game into like the last five minutes of the game, rough. Yeah. I think we'll get there. I think we'll get there. I think we're still dealing with injuries. You 100%. know, I, I think that this was huge for us to go, you know, on this three game win streak right now, especially with these road games coming back home. Um, the nice thing is that this we're seeing something that we haven't really seen historically over the last few years. And it's the offense's ability to make up for the defense's, you know, 
bad games or a streak of, of, of bad plays or whatever's going on. And we saw another great performance from two guys, uh, 21 for 30, 300 yards passing, three touchdowns, Sorry. 70% completion percentage. I mean, really, really solid. And, and then not just that, like just beyond the stat lines, watching the game, watching his decision making as our quarterback, man. I mean, it's just very reassuring to see, you know, what happened to him in, in week three and four with the back to back, you know, concussions or, or whatever. And then now coming in and he's not scared to tuck and run the ball if he has to. And if the pocket's collapsing, he's not making these crazy decisions. We may have gotten away with a couple of intentional groundings. That's something yeah. that, 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 you know, is maybe a little bit of a concern, but I'd rather an intentional ground than you throwing it up for, uh, you know, for the defense to grab it and get a pick. And, and he's staying, he's staying pretty consistent there. What, what do you guys think of Tua and, and his performance in this game? For me, I'll start with it, you, so. for me, it was – I feel like the best throw he made today was a third uh, – I think it was a third down or a second down play where we were in the red zone. He had uh, evaded the rush, started to get away from the quarter – from the rush, was about to force it, and instead of forcing it, he threw it all the way in the back of the end zone to get another down and another opportunity. That's the maturity he showed because right before that, there was a play where – he got brought down. It should have been an intentional grounding, and he kind of threw it to the ground right in front of him instead of just taking the sack. Yeah, and for me, honestly, yeah, those intentional groundings, I feel like it could be cleaned up, and, and it's like you got to pass. Just get, get on to the next down. And right. overall, he, he had a really good game. Um, 300 yards, three touchdowns. Not really much you can knock today. Uh, again, I think the only thing is the intentional groundings because – Although you say he threw it away, I feel like he was getting tackled and throwing it instead of just, you know, take the intentional grounding. It's better than fucking getting an interception. It really is. I'm, I'm going to point something out because I would love to hear your take on this, Martin. I know that you've been uh, – this is something that you've you know, talked about before. Under throwing the ball. There was a couple of occasions. There's two plays in particular that I think about. One of them was the the what would have been a touchdown to Tyreek Hill early on in the game, which he ended up calling. Uh, they ended up calling a pass interference on the Bears. Set up a nice, you know, uh, run for Raheem Mostert to get in the end zone. Uh, the other one was late in the game. It was third down. We needed a play. He throws it up to to Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle had, you know, he had blown by his defender, and the ball was a little bit underthrown. You know, the Bears end up getting the ball, and our defense has to make the stop for us to win the game. Um, I'm not concerned with the under throws. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the stats speak for themselves. But what about you, Martin? How do you feel about those throws? To be honest, the throw, the only throw I would probably even call out, it wasn't any of those. Um, I would call out the fourth down, I think it was. And the he underthrew and Smythe. Yeah, he underthrew Smythe. And he had perfect blocking. He had all the time in the world. He rushed the pass. Uh, they're saying there was some miscommunication with him, between him and Smythe. So that's the only thing. I'm not giving him an excuse. But I think if anything, I'm not even going to say the ones you said. It happens. You know, not everybody's going to throw a perfect pass every game. I'll take uh, that, but, man. But that, but that Smythe underthrow in a crucial situation. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, need, that's the we one I'm going to cut out. You know why? Because we were, at that point, there was seven minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. And the score was how it finished, 35 to 32. And for us to keep driving, right, he decided – for another week to not take the points and let to go for a fourth down, maybe had the right play call because the initial play was to Tyreek Hill, but they blew that up. His secondary throw was to um, Smite, and he had time to plant his feet. He had My time hey, to let, make the let's throw, not forget and he rushed Mostert. it. Mostert made a hell of a block. He hell of a block. It. A yeah. hell of a block, which allowed to at that time, and which is why I got mad. He had time to set himself up to yeah. make that easy throw and get the first down which could have iced the game. We could have shaved another two, three, four minutes off the clock, you know, and possibly mm -hmm. score again. Yeah, that's exactly right. But, you know, at the end of the day, our defense ended up making the stop at the end that we needed. They go four and out, and they aren't able to convert, and we win the game. But uh, to, you had mentioned Tyreek Hill. We got to shout him out again. Seven catches, 143 yards with a touchdown on eight targets. So that means he only had one incompletion. Uh, and Jalen Waddle right there with him, five catches, 85 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, those guys, man, week in and week out, Balling. Um, you got to be real happy that those guys are wearing a Dolphins uniform right now. I, and I then, think, well, yeah, go ahead. No, I think as Dolphins fans, we have to be even happier that Wilson looked very solid out there. It wasn't like, hey, Moser's the only guy going out there and, and putting up yards. Wilson's coming up spell and maybe even playing more than the Mostert and, and getting those catches and opening it up for, for the offense. Well, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm say, happy that he got the playing time today because Wilson came coming in today. Not only that, but making the difference, right? 
not he knows the scheme, but it's another thing to know the scheme and to go out there on game day and produce. Oh, and this dude came in a hundred percent cold in off a trade deadline and came into the game and really put positivity and produce for the team. That was a huge day for him. This is how you know that we've been doing this now for about nine weeks because I was really getting ready to set that exact uh, like thing up and and Martin just completely took it from me. So sorry, man. Thanks sorry. again, Martin. Uh, but no, yes, I, I was I was going there. Um, Jeff Wilson, man, hell yeah, it was a great addition. Now we have the the Forty ers you know, running back room from last year, basically, uh, which did well under McDaniel's. So it was really nice to see Jeff Wilson out there. We saw Raheem, man. I got him on my fantasy team, so it kind of hurts to see Wilson coming in and make such an impact. But as a Dolphins fan, it's reassuring because Raheem did drop a pass uh, in the red zone that should have been a touchdown had he caught yeah. it, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would have been a touchdown. Mm -hmm. And then Jeff Wilson showing what he has with his hands and his ability to make plays. I mean, this is going to be a scary you know, backfield. And uh, I'm going to go on a stretch here and say that I can definitely see Jeff Wilson taking that RB1 spot later on in the year. Over what over uh, Raheem and but Raheem is it a, is it now. really is it really an RB one because it's a R, it's a RB A and RB B RB one A one B it yeah. has to be because like A we don't see a full time commitment to the run right we've yet to see a game where we give somebody twenty carries so yep. we know we're not a run first second third team so I don't think we have a first down back I think what we have is guys who can offer different things depending where we're at on in the, the situation. Field. Mm -hmm. And what we need in this situation, right? Yeah, yeah. we're we're playing we're play play uh, basically doing in a shootout with the Bears. So in a shootout, you want your pass catcher slash you know Jeff Wilson is that that back that could play all three downs. Although Mostert the better pass blocker, um, I feel like this is a great situation. This is what we've been looking for from Edmonds, uh, being able to have somebody that could run like Mostert, but have a guy like Wilson that could come in, and it's not really like you're missing a beat. But yeah. I do think on a games in a shootout, Wilson will see in a close game in a in a game that we're we're probably leading. Mostert will be the guy with the with the lead carries. That's my I opinion. hope so for my fantasy team's sake. <laughs> I definitely hope so. But it was really nice to see what Jeff Wilson was able to bring to the table today. Man, he he, he looks really good. He looks really really good, and that's scary for for other teams. Um, Offense held it down, guys. We great performances. I mean, we we got by. You know, it wasn't another it wasn't another pretty win, right? It was another ugly win, but it's another win, and we need it right now, especially with the way that the things are shaping up in the AFC East. Uh, we just saw the Bills actually lose to the Jets. Yeah, go figure. Wow, crazy. Jets, Jets were home game victories against the Bills and the Dolphins. Yeah, man. So right now the Bills are sitting at the top <laughs> at six and two, followed by the Jets at six and three, followed by us at six and three, and the Patriots won today too. They're at five and four. Um, is the AFC East the most difficult division in the NFL today? Some people might say it's the NFC East, East right? Yeah. Well, what's going on right there? But which is crazy, I, which is yeah. crazy to say. The, but if I had to, in there. Yep. if I if I had to put my money on it, I think I would have leaned towards the AFC East because the AFC East has real good defenses. Ours, the Jets and Buffalo Bills, those defenses are not to be messed with. In Phil in the a NFC East, there's only one real dominant defense, and that that and that's Dallas. You know, Eagles are winning games, but it's not because of their defense. I feel like Dallas wins games because of their defense, especially when Dak was out. Um, I don't know, man. AFC East is looking tough as hell. I'm glad that Mike McDaniel has the vision to keep up with this with this division and, and the and what's going on in it, right? The offenses, how they're getting exploited, and what they're trying to do, and what the defenses are able to provide. Um, keeping pace, man. We've lost three straight. We won three straight, lost three straight, and now we're winning three straight again. Um, it's good to be on a streak, man, a win streak. Yeah, we'll take it any way we can get, especially, you know, now we're coming back home to play the Browns next week who are coming off a bye week, uh, and they, they've had their issues. Uh, so I, we can definitely take them on, and they got a guy that we know very well, right, and Jacoby Brissett right. leading, their, leading their team. So I think that's the game that our defense steps up, right, and make, and really – uh, shines and and that that'll be good before we go into our bye week. Um, so four wins, right? That'd be that'd be a nice little streak right there, right before the bye Absolutely. week. It'll put us at seven and three. I wouldn't mind that, boys. I mean, we're we're three and one at home, so you gotta love that. Oh yeah, yeah. To me, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be the one two punch of the run game with Chubb and Hunt. That's gonna hurt us. Um, I feel Brissett's been solid, but it's all been started by Chubb's running. So yeah. let's see. 
We and if we tackled down. like we tackled today against those guys, oh, forget about it. Oh, and and the and the pass rush of the Browns is, is isn't something to so, play with. Yeah, Miles Garrett is a beast, bro. That it guy's a good. beast. So there, that's definitely something we got to prepare for. So we can't sleep on on the Ben on the Browns. I should say uh, that's going to be an important one, and we'll cover that pregame again uh, in Sports with Soso. We'll drop that later on this week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, any other final thoughts, gentlemen, before we go three and out? Six and three is pretty nice. Uh. Yeah, I, I would say let, let's continue this complete game from the offense and hopefully we get healthy on the defense and we clean things up because I'm not one to just let them off the hook. They need to do better. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you right there. Uh, love to see the offense being able to win games for us. That's something we haven't been able to see over the last few years and, and kind of depend on. Um, but I cannot wait until this defense gets healthy and starts clicking again because we are going to be the team to beat, boys. So, all right, so take us to our three and out. Let's do it. It's time for our three and out presented by Empire Boutique. If you can't tell, they sponsor three and out, so they keep your boy fresh. And this is where we bring you our oh shit moment of the game, our unsung hero of the game, and our MVP, most valuable thing. Martin, you get the honor of starting today. What was your oh shit moment of the day? Hands down, there's no way around it. If it wasn't that block punt by Jalen Phillips, that that to me, especially a full like a game that wasn't great by the defense to see that, nice. Yeah, Very nice. No, nah, I'm gonna piggyback. I'm gonna jump right in. That's exactly my moment of the game. I mean, that was that was beautiful right there. Cause I had just said in the in the chat, I was like, man, I want a three and out here. And Justin Fields ran for like 12 yards. I was like, there goes that. I was all salty about it. Mm. Then we proceed to go three and out. They punt it and we blocked that punt. And I was like, oh shit. Like I spoke way too soon and Martin called me out <laughs> on it. So uh that was my oh shit moment for this game. Shout that out to good. Jalen Phillips and, and Andrew Van Ginkle. That was pretty good. Um, I, I got to wrap it up with that one, too, honestly. Because <laughs> Go for the sweep. It, it, no, it was honestly a big momentum changer in the game, right? I, I, I didn't know if we were going to be able to stop their offense. It looked like it was going to go tit for tat. And just getting that unexpected touchdown from special teams where we knew that it may or may not happen, man, that was a big oh shit moment, which helped propel the Dolphins into the lead. All right, it's time for our unsung hero of the game. For me, I'm going to kick it off with Darth Cater Cahoo. Uh, <laughs> eight solo tackles on the day. A lot of big plays, a lot of big tackles, mostly stopping fields once he got going. Uh, I feel like this guy is really taking on the position that he's been given and exceeding at it. So I had to shout him out today. What about you, Joel? Who was your unsung here? <clears throat> Man, this one's a, an interesting one for me. Um I, I kind of want to give my unsung hero to the new guy, man. I want to give it to Jeff Olson mm. just because of the fact that, I mean, he didn't have a ridiculous stat line, nine for 51 and receiving. He had uh, three catches for 21 and a touchdown. Yeah. But that one touchdown right there that he had was amazing. He he just he, he looked explosive. He looked like he, you know, he's getting up field. He's quick uh, playmaking ability. I mean, the kid is going to be somebody that is going to be able to contribute. He already has in his first game. So I got to give yeah. him the unsung hero. He got on some hero the moment that we traded Edmonds, Bobble. <laughs> you didn't have to wait for the game. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. Easy, easy pick. He changed the flow of the game. Oh, we we're, going, we we're get... agreeing? Are you picking him too? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. All right, look at me and Martin. Uh, you, you can't say no with the way that Edmonds has been gaga, to say the least. To him to come in and let the, the game flow continue, it's been beautiful. It was beautiful today. It was beautiful. Hell, yeah. For sure, for sure. And, uh, of course, the MVP, most valuable thing for me, I got to kick it off with the man of the hour, Tyree Kill. Um, what this guy continues to do, a 20-yard average today, uh, seven of eight catches. I think he had, what, 144? Oh, 43, sorry. The longest catch was 39 yards. What the hell would this offense look like without him? I'm not even – I can't even picture it. I don't want to picture it. MVP is Tyree Kill. What about you, Martin? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I don't like copying people, but today I've been doing a lot of it. Um, <laughs> Tyree Kill, easy. And I easy. honestly, right now, through nine games, there's no, I'm sorry, I guess you guys can make the argument for Tua, but I'm giving it to Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill is literally being force fed and like excelling with those numbers. Like, without it's crazy. a doubt. That's crazy. What about you, Black and Black, Joel? <laughs> Doug, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to. This might be the most boring three and out second yeah. we've ever done. It's got to be Tyreek, man. It's got to be Tyreek. He was seven for eight, guys. The only pass that he didn't catch was that 
that first play, that bomb where it was that pass interference. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the only one he dropped. So that means he he went seven for seven for the rest of the game for us. What he does, it, it's it's incredible. It's not just what he's able to do and provide for us, but what he's able to open up for the rest of the team and for Tua, you know, because there's so much attention being drawn to him. I don't know how many times we see Waddle get wide open when it's right. like, dude, you should not be leaving Waddle wide open. But then it's like, if we double cover him, what do we do with that guy over there that's running down the field 40 miles an hour? Yeah. So I didn't give it to him last week. I don't think I think I gave it to Tua, um, yeah. but I, I got to give it to Tyreek this week. He, he deserves his flower. So he's uh, our most valuable Finn collectively as a group. And Keon Crossing gets an honorable mention because he got away with a huge pass. Yeah, the I, know. <laughs> I, was, I was really bad. And the referee was right there on it. Right so I was there. like, what are you getting paid for, what, buddy? What I think saved them was the fact he was, was the playing Vegas the ball. Spread. It was the Vegas well, spread. That's what saved him. <laughs> he, 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 was, he, he was looking back playing the ball. Uh, but yeah, man, that that we got away with a couple there, boys. But hey, it's all good. On the on to the Cleveland Browns next week, and we're playing them at home. That's gonna be a good one. I can't wait to to jump on here and check and yeah. talk about it with you guys next week. Uh, thank you guys again for for it's tuning for in. Thank you guys for for watching. I hope you guys drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe as always. Uh, until next time, y'all. Peace. White orange and teal, the physical real, you know it's a deal. It's blessed when tears are up in his huddle with water to cook up a meal. My coaching and two with a combo is chill. Play action to chase, got hunger to feel. The cheetah is loose, he's going for blood. The end of the wrist only went for the kill. Miami, the city, the county, the block. We steady on pack tail, dead in the lock. Thief is strong and hard as a rock. Holland's a lock, and next one's a spot. Get it too hot, so turn up the fan. You look to the crowd, see Jimmy and Bam. Martin, Joe, and so so the man's your fellas. Roll the clip, only fans.